Uh, ladies, uh, your attention just a moment, please. Tomorrow morning, we will be joined by a new telephonist. Miss Maguire has been sent to us from Perth in Australia as part of the Commonwealth Exchange Programme. I need hardly remind you that as representatives of the GPO, we must display exemplary behaviour at all times. And bearing in mind that some of you will be caught up in preparations for our charity gala, this will not be acceptable as an excuse for neglecting our guest. A final note regarding Friday's charity gala. Mr. Monk will be in charge of interval entertainment, which I am reliably informed will be a most exhilarating game of Subutio football. And then we ended up at this party and I got introduced to this Fleet Street editor. I gave him some patter about talent in the East Midlands, namely yours truly, and he gave me his number. He said he'd be in touch. It only means one thing, Sylph. What? Well, a job, of course. Surprised you bother coming back to Dull Old Derby after all that excitement. Are you still mad at me for going to London without you? I suppose it was partly my fault. Well, just to show I was thinking about you. Classy, eh? They're lovely. Thank you. All the smartest girls in London are wearing them. Spent a lot of time studying the girls, did you? There was some cracking talent down there. Do you really think you'll go to London for good? Matter of time. And what about me? You can visit me whenever you like. And I'll be back at weekends. As long as I'm not on an important assignment. Can't I go with you? I could get a job too. Maybe at the International Exchange. Look, Sylv, it's a nice idea, but for the first few months I'm going to be staying with a mate. There's not going to be any room. Sounds like you've got it all worked out. Well, this could be my big chance. And I'd only get under your feet. London is a long way from Derby. I know. Sylv? Where the boys are, someone waits for me. A smiling face, a warm embrace, two arms to hold me tenderly. Come on, Fruity, join in. We need all the practice we can get before Friday night. The boys are my true. Ladies, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce our overseas guest, Miss Maguire. Welcome to Derby Exchange. Thank you ever so much. Uh, Miss Simmons, if you would be so good as to take up a position at another bench. Thank you. Miss Cross, would you be so kind as to take Miss Maguire under your wing until she is au fait with procedure? Yes, Miss Mary. Any questions, dear? Uh, no, thank you. If it's all the same, I'd like to get straight to work. Splendid. That's the spirit. First day's always the most nerve-wracking, but you'll be fine. Any problems, Belinda, just say the word. <laughs> Call me Bella. Oh, that's what I answer to back home. Number, please. I do hope you've enjoyed your first day with us. Oh, it's been marvellous. And Derby's such a terrific place. I can't wait to visit your cathedral and the Riverside Gardens and... What a pleasant change. <sighs> Most of our girls prefer more outlandish leisure pursuits. Yeah, I gathered that. They seem very fond of pubs and popular music and that sort of thing. <sighs> Give me a good book and Johann Sebastian Beethoven any day. <laughs> Fruity. I'm sure your mark wasn't serious about going to London. Believe me, it was. We'll try not to think about it for now. You've got the show on Friday to look forward to. Come on. A quick jean tea will sort you out in no time. Tender. 
Darling, back home on the star of my local Anne Dram Society. I play all the female leads. I can imagine. <laughs> Means get to kiss all the leading men. Come and pick a tune, Belinda. Mm. Let's hope she doesn't choke on a gin and lemon. I bought the new Dwayne Eddy record this afternoon. Play your cards right, I might let you borrow it. Might you know? On one condition, might. And what's that? You put your money on me on Friday. I'll have to think about it. I've heard Johnny's pretty good. He's not a patch on me, though. He hasn't got that special... Curtis technique. I suppose I'll just have to take your word for it, then. It's worth it. For Dwayne Eddy. Cheer up. It might never happen if it does. So what? <laughs> my sister Joy lives in Australia. No kidding. Has done for most of my life. Sounds like a wonderful place. Oh, it is. <laughs> Sunshine, great scenery, and the peachiest men in the world. You should go over there sometime. Chance would be a fine thing. I don't have much luck when it comes to getting away from Derby. So where does a girl go for a bit of action around here? There's the Locarno. It's a dance hall. Guys? Not. Well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> I'm off to the Lacana, but we're supposed to be rehearsing later. Well, one night won't make a difference. Mm. Ready? Come on, Fruity. I told you. Sylvia, fancy about to eat? Sorry, I've made other plans. Mike, this is Bella, Bella Mike. Bella, eh? <laughs> Bella Bellissima. <laughs> so what do you do? I'm a journalist. Oh, exciting. Oh, you must be so talented writing all those words. <laughs> Come on, Bella, we've got to go. Oh, bye, Mike. Nice to meet you. Hope we can do it again. Sylv, I'll call you. Mike might be a dish, but I'd dump him pronto. Would you? Too right, flitting to London. Can't have his cake and eat it. No, I suppose not. Believe me, he's not the only fish in the sea. I don't know what I do wrong. All I want is one person who really cares about me. Hmm. Well, what do you reckon to those two? Quivers down the backbone. I got the shakes down the knee bone. You have the tremors in the thigh bone. Shaking all over. Line, please, caller. I mean, it's not that you can't sing. You just need a little polish. Really? Hmm. Trying to connect. You, you could do with moving around a bit more, too. Don't want to look like stuffed dummies. Thanks for the advice. Anytime. Mm. I think you're right, Bella. It's easy to get complacent. Trying to connect. You, you lot will be blown away when you hear my voice. I've got an incredible range. Move over, Maria Callas. What are you going to sing? Watch this space. <laughs> oh, damn, where am I? Here. Let me help you out. I'm sorry, caller, there's a temporary problem. Please hold the line. I'm sorry, caller, there's a temporary problem. It's hold gross. the line, please. What on earth is going on? I'm just sorting it out, Miss Armitage. What kind of example is this for our exchange guest? Do be quick. Sorry about that. Thank you for waiting, caller. Up the wing. Now, and he shoots. No, it's out. And it's a corner for jersey number seven. Mention mount for the Derby exchanges. <clears throat> Thought I'd take a peek at what goes on with you boys down here. By all means, uh, come in, Petal. Ah, oh, this must be that Subodio thing the girls are talking about. Show me how you do a goal. Cute. We'll have to go for a drink sometime and you can tell me all about Saburio. 
We'd be more than happy to oblige, wouldn't we, Dave? What do you reckon? Yeah, great. I'll wait for you after work tomorrow. Don't be late. seriously then please leave this isn't the first time I've had to warn you about your giddy behavior during the past few days now settle down and pay attention that's it okay, okay. Miss McGuire we're ready for you now talking to a couple of squaddies at the next table. That's a pity. I don't reckon I'm her type, Simon. And she's definitely not mine. I was just about to go to bed, actually. Why are you avoiding yourself? I'm not. Well, you haven't returned any of my calls, and every time I see you, you're off out with that new Aussie Polly. You're not my keeper. No, but I'm your boyfriend. Yeah, when it suits you. What's that supposed to mean? If you don't know, then I'm not going to waste my breath explaining. Look, Sylv, if you're mad about me going to London without you, I can understand that. <gasps> don't flatter yourself. Why should I care where you go? Come on, Sylv. Just leave me alone, Mike. Go away! Sylvia! Why do all the men I meet end up leaving me behind? Because they obviously don't know a good thing when they see it. Oh, fruity, come oh, my kid, Chris! God, I'm so sick of everyone telling me what I can and can't do! It's my life, I'll do what I like. No one's telling you anything, I'm worried about you. Well, don't be, I'm fine. So you can stop acting like a mother hen and leave me alone. Now, look here, Sylvia. There's no need to talk to me like that. You can all say what you want, but one of these days, I am going to just take off. I'll go anywhere, as long as it's as far away as possible from flaming <laughs> Sorry I'm late. What do you think this is, a hotel? Seven in the morning. Oh, we've got to meet the boys at noon. It'll take us an hour to get to the barracks by bus, and then we'll just have to hang around for a oh, few hours. Boys, but... barracks, what are you talking about? Hmm? Come on. I do hope Miss McGuire's migraine clears up before tonight's show. It would be such a pity to lose her contribution. Poor girl. It must have been a terribly tiring week for her. Why don't you think Sylvia is? Hold the line, please, sir. I don't know. There was no sign of her in the flat this morning. I just assumed she'd left early. Well, it's not like Sylvia to go AWOL and not tell anyone about it. Well, it's hardly surprising, the way that she's been acting since that Bella showed up. Trying to connect you. Still no sign of Miss Sands? I knew she wasn't feeling very well last night. She said she had a bad headache. Oh, 
dear. There seems to be a lot of that about at the moment. She will be well enough for the show this evening, won't she? Definitely. She wouldn't let the teletomes down. Want your kisses, try to show you just what bliss is Then fulfill all of your wishes Would you be willing to be mine? If I always dreamed about you Said that I could never doubt you Couldn't ever live without you Would you say you'd be mine? Oh my baby, honey baby Don't say maybe Say that we can be together Promise you will leave me never Know my love is yours forever If you will just <laughs> be mine Fancy a little liquid lunch, anyone? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> uh, steady on, Sylvia. Save some for us. night she was in such a state. I'm sure she'll be all right. Oh, if only we hadn't had that stupid argument. I feel terrible. Don't blame yourself, Chris. We all say things we don't mean in the heat of the moment. I forgot to call in to say I'm sick. <laughs> Shame on you, Sylvia Sands. I warned you about your giddy behaviour. I'm bored. I want to do something exciting. Got any good ideas, boys? <laughs> Cards. Oh, you really know how to show a girl a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Ever played strip poker? <laughs> Splendid. Good grief. Look what you're doing, Mr. Glover. It's upside down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't want to play anymore. Oh, don't be a spoil sport, Sylvia. It's only a bit of fun. Come on, you've got to take something off. Don't be shy. I feel sick. Any excuse? You've got to get back, Bill. It's six o'clock. Not until we finish this game. Get off me! I'll grow up, Sylvia. I want to go home. You're so selfish. I want to go home now. Have it your own way, then, Miss Stuckup. Get out. But I want to stay. Now look what you've done. It's all your fault. I don't call being mauled and groped by a pair of gorillas having a good time. No wonder you can't keep your boyfriends. You go! Well, it's true. I'd rather be on my own than chasing after every fella that looks at me. So much for your big ideas. You never get anywhere, Sylvia. You can't last five minutes away from Darby and your cosy little pals. At least I've got friends. You! You're just a waste of time. This is happening. Well, this still ages till the interval. She might still show up. Yeah, but what will you tell Miss Mary to Miss Armitage if they don't? Miss McGuire did assure me that she would be here. We better send Mr. Clough on next instead. But that still leaves a gap in the program. We'll have to fill it with something. I suppose I could sing a little something accompanied by the piano forte. Or I could give a poetry recital. A most generous offer. As event producer, I feel it my duty to step into the breach. 
apart from which I have had considerably more theatrical experience. Come on! Please, someone answer! Dave, what time is it? It's Sylvia. She's called. She sounded a bit odd, but she's given me some directions. We've got to go and get her. Right, me and Mike can go in my car. Well, you can't. The interval's in 40 minutes. You haven't seen me drive. Ladies and gentlemen. You have five minutes left to place your bets before the GPO Subutio Championship commences. And playing for the post office will be Mr. Johnny Reese. And for the exchanges, Mr. Dave Curtis. Still no sign of them. No. At it when I get my flaming hands on him. He'll be back in time. Sylvia! Get your backside out from front. Oh. I'm so sorry. Oh, never mind that now. Are you well enough to go on? Really oh, come on, let's get you in costume and get you cleaned up. Oh. What are we gonna do with her? Dolly! Dolly! Mr. Baldwin, the chief accountant, wants to congratulate you. He's front of house. Oh. <laughs> Will you join us, Annie? Okay, here we go. And he's off, he's dribbling it. And he's been tackled. Here, One get this down, you. He shoots, he scores. Are you sure you're going to be up to it? No, it's through. And it's a goal for the sorting officers. And with six goals each and just minutes to go, this could be the shot that decides the game. And the pressure's now on for the sorting officers. It's a foul. Penalty to Derby exchanges. Could this be the end for the post officers? I sincerely hope so, Dave. <laughs> oh, and it's victory for Derby exchanges. Tough luck, mate. I'd better get my eyes tested. I think it's your fitness that let you down.
of a disappointment that our Australian friend let us down. But despite that, I think it all went splendidly. One for the road, Annie. Why not? Oh. Oh. Don't mind me. Oh, I'm just grabbing 40 winks before I go on stage. Oh, I want to make sure I look my best for the show. Hey, you look pretty good. You weren't so bad yourself. Thanks for helping out before. Oh, I quite enjoyed all the excitement. <laughs> I'm glad someone did. <laughs> Should have given Sylvia a right here for. She's lucky to have a mate like you. I uh, brought your record back. I'll oh, keep it. Souvenir. Ta very much. Let's be going. Have a great weekend, Chris. Yeah, you too. I was really worried about you today. Were you? Of course I was. I didn't think you'd be bothered. Then you thought wrong. Anyway, you'll have to get used to me not being around once you go to London. I'm not going. I got a bit carried away. I shouldn't have counted my chickens and all that. I'm sorry. I should have learned to keep my big trap shut. I made a right. Fooling myself. You'll get to London one day. <laughs> kiss me, honey, honey, kiss me. Another exchange visit next week at the same time, 8.30, BBC One. Don't care.